So in LaTeX, you can uh, define your own commands to make your life easier. For example, if you want to write, uh, well, it's already there, but this uh, symbol for real numbers, and let's say x in r. Uh, if you want to write it multiple times, this must be vr, uh, it becomes quite complicated. I mean, it, it's long, and you can say, okay, well, my, my editor, uh, as soon as I type ma, immediately suggests that I want to write map br, so it's not a problem, but it takes time to type because it doesn't take time for me. But there are at least two other reasons uh, for which it's useful to reduce this to a command. And one is uh, that it makes your document easier, so if here, instead of having this complicated sequence of letters and symbols, I just add r, it would be much easier to read my own LaTeX and maybe fix it if I have a mistake or if I want to change this r to a c, I can change it easily, I can find where it is, otherwise it's difficult to read. And another reason uh, is that you might later want to change the way you write the symbol and you can do it, uh, as I will show you in a second. So how do, how do you actually make this thing here work? Because right now it doesn't, it doesn't work, this command r doesn't exist. I can define it with new command, very simple. Then I type r, what I want the command to be, and then I type what I want the command to show, must be r. And now, it works, and you see that it does exactly uh, what I wanted. And if I wanted to say R somewhere else, some other sentence, and then let's say I use it inline now. Uh, I don't know if the zoom is going to work, but well, it's going to be here on the left. Oh, here you go. Uh, and every time, uh, it's going to appear like this, simply by using this command that I defined. So it's quite convenient, and what I was going to say is that another reason why it is convenient is that maybe at some point I decide that I don't want to write the symbol for real numbers like this because maybe the, the book that I'm reading is something else. So I want to, to stick to what the book does. So I can change this here, for example, if I want math BF, and then I just needed to change it here. And then every time I use this command R, it's going to change. It changed there, but it also changed uh, here. So this is very useful, actually. So if, for example, you're using a notation that you're not sure it is very is the best possible one, so you can just define a command and then decide later that you want to use a letter or another or a style instead of another for your symbol. Now, commands don't, are not limited to uh, a math environment. Uh, you can also use a command for whatever else you want. For example, let's say you want a command, let's call it to do that writes a big to-do, uh, all caps, in, in places where I, I have to do something. And let's say we also want it red. So, well, actually, if you want it large, you can do it like this. And if you want it colored, you have to use the use package X color. And let's say I want it, uh, color works like the large command. I wanted this block inside here to be red and large. And if now I use the to-do command that I just defined, it's going to be here on the left. It's a big to-do. Uh, let me zoom out. I have this big to-do here. And so, and, and every time I want to write a to-do, a to-do big red, which you know takes some time to write, I just I just write this to-do. Uh, let me zoom out again. Actually, maybe I need 75%. Okay. Um, but let's say instead of just writing to do, you want to, to write something more. You want to specify what exactly uh, you need to do there, because to do is a bit vague. Uh, you can do this with uh, an argument. So I can say that I want one argument here, and then add after this to do, add the argument, uh, which is going to be whatever I type. So if I write to do, finish this proof, for example, and here, this one is to do, check if uh, this is correct. I'm going to use the same command with a different argument that does basically the same thing, something big, red, with a, introduced by a big to do, by all caps to do. But then I can specify an argument. So in this case, this sentence here. So this is also quite useful. Uh, but I want to show you another example. Let's go back to math mode. So let's say you want to type something like 
uh, vectors, you know, v1, v2, dots, v, n, close, close everything. Uh, yeah, I, let, let me just do it like this. You want to type this, and actually, let's zoom in again. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you want to type vectors, and you have a Brighton, I don't know, linear algebra homework, and you have a lot of vectors to use, and it takes time. So you want this to be a command, for example. So let's define it. New command. Uh, let's call it my back. Oops. And here we just we just copy this. Here. And well, this one we don't need anymore. We just write my vector. And yeah, it does this. And and this is an, another another. Uh, I can show you that, for example, if you want to change the round parentheses to square brackets, you can just change it here, and then every time you use this my back command, it's going to change. So quite useful. But let's go back to the parentheses, which I actually prefer. Um, yeah, but now let's say no, no vectors, not all vectors are called V, right? Sometimes uh, you need to use more than one vector, so you need two letters at least. Uh, so you might have a vector called W. So how do you do it? You, you can define another command called my vec W, which uses W instead of V, but that's not very convenient. Uh, what you can do is, as we did before, you can change this V to be uh, an argument. So you specify that you want one argument, and you call it here with one. And uh, here too. So if I say my vec, now I have to specify an argument, which can be V, but can also be W, for example. And now we have a w vector, and if I want to change it to, I don't know, t, we have a t vector. And so you can use up to nine arguments. Now we saw, in these examples, we saw that we have one. Uh, you can use up to nine, and they're called from one to nine, and you always call them like this, with this hashtag. Um, but let's say, for example, that you want two arguments, because not all vectors have n coordinates. Sometimes you you have a number, like an actual number, like, I don't know, 10 coordinates. Sometimes you have, uh, you need a different letter, like K, for example. We can change this by using a second com a second argument. So we specify that you want two arguments. This N becomes uh, argument number two. And now we say we want vector T with K coordinates, right? Or with M coordinates. And what if we want it with 10 coordinates, what happens? Does it work? Actually, it doesn't. Uh, why is this? Why does, does this happen? Because this 10 here is not really grouped together. Okay, yeah, this 10 is the number 2 here. So, LaTeX, every time you see, use this command, it's going to replace uh, whatever you wrote with this string with number 1 replaced by this t and number 2 replaced by this 10. But it doesn't actually also copy this this uh, braces around it. So it's going to what what, what appears here is going to be t underscore one zero. And you know that if you do it like this without the uh, curly braces around it, it, it only the one is considered a subscript and the zero is like a continuation of your math sentence. So the way you do it is actually you type uh, braces around it. And actually, it's better if you do it for every possible, for every argument here, you type braces around it. It uh, depends on your use case, but it's just safer to do it like this. And now it works. But now let's say that you're, uh, sometimes you want to specify an n, and uh, sometimes you want to specify the number of coordinates, and sometimes you don't, because most of the times you're actually using vectors that have n coordinates. So you would like uh, not having to specify this number here, which most of the time is n, you would like not to specify it every time. So one way to to do it is to define a new command, which I call my vec n, which, what does it do? Well, it takes one argument, because you're only changing the letter for your vector, and it calls my vec with first argument, the say v or t that you gave, and the second argument is fixed to n. And if I do this, now I can do, uh, let me, well, let's take some space here. And I do my vec n and just specify the v. 
and it's going to do default n. If you want your default letter n to be like m, you can change it here, and now your vec v is going to call my vec with v and m. Uh, but there's another way which is maybe more elegant to do this is to use optional argument. So let's let's define a new command and let's call it uh, my vec up for optional, uh, which has again two arguments, but we want one of the arguments to be optional. So if we omit it, it's going to replace it with n. If we if we actually specify it, then n doesn't appear and it's replaced by what I wrote. So in LaTeX, it's quite limited in this sense because you can have at most one optional argument and it has to be the number one argument. So I can specify that I want the first argument to be optional by giving it a default value here, which can also be empty, but in this case, I'm going to write n. And then I have to, well, to copy this thing here. But now, since the first one is supposed to be the, the, the end one, the optional one, I have to swap one and two. Two, one. Uh, yeah, so now if I say that this one is my vec up and I write v, uh, it's going to do the same thing with n as the default value. And you see that if I change the default value and I say, for example, k is the default value now, uh, it's going to use k here. And if I want to specify a value to replace this k, I can do it by writing it here. For example, I want 10. And now the, the optional argument uh, is going to be like, activated and it's replacing the default value with the value I specified. So as I said, this default new command uh, included in LaTeX is quite limited because you can have at most nine arguments and at most one of them can be optional and um, it must be the number one argument. Uh, but of, there are ways to do more complicated things. If you see, for example, this use package command, which is included in LaTeX as something as more than one optional argument, this one are all optional, and you can specify which one you're giving a value to by using like right equals two centimeters, or if I don't specify right, I can just say left equals something. And there are ways to do it, but you have to use like tech primitives or use a, some other external packages. So I just leave links in the description. I'm not going to cover it here. So let's do one last thing. So let's say uh, we're keeping this vector here, V and we want to give it a name. So for example, we want uh, like an over right arrow v, we want something like this, right? Uh, actually, let's do, let do left arrow, because uh, uh, I need it. And, and again, I, I would like this, this long command here to be a command that I define, for example, vec v. So I'm going to define a new command Call it deck. Oops, sorry. And replace it. Uh, no, not this one. Uh, what do you want to do? Over left arrow. Uh, let's say over left arrow one, and let's say that this deck command has one. One argument. Now, what happens now? There's an error, and there's an error here because the command deck is already defined in LaTeX. So, in fact, if I uh, if I remove this line and I compile, you see that vec v here is going to be this symbol here with this nicer and smaller arrow to the right, uh, which is already included in LaTeX. So if I want to overwrite a command that is already included in LaTeX, what I can do is renew command, uh, which means if a command vec is already defined, overwrite it. You can use renew command all the time if you want to be safe and don't clash with defaults. Uh, yeah, so in this case, the old vec command is going to be replaced by our version. If instead you want a command, a new, your command, if a command you defined not to replace the standard version, but to be like transparent and say, okay, if there is already a command vec, I want to use that one. And if there is no command called vec, I want, uh, I want to define one, which looks like this. You have to use provide command. And in this case, I define a command vec, which uh, which is going to appear like this, like we wrote here, unless there is already a command back, in which case I'm getting the default value. 
Uh, yeah, so for example, provide command is useful if you want to define something, but you don't know if later you're going to maybe include uh, a package that already contains some symbols and some commands that are actually what you want to, uh, to write. So yeah, you can, you can use this to have like a transparent definition that keeps the default value if there exists one. And you can use renew command to overwrite an existing definition. So yeah, this is all I wanted to say uh, about defining your own commands. Check the description if you want to go more in depth.